Hey guys, Yubi here. So this is the Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 2 5G. So the Galaxy Z Fold 2 has been my daily driver for more than two weeks now. Now whenever people in general talk about foldable, they usually talk about the display, folding mechanism, the hinge, the crease, the durability. But the one thing that I've never seen most of the people put focus on is the bill. The Galaxy Z Fold 2 is a very heavy phone. It has a bit of a dense. For me, the Galaxy Z Fold 2 is the definition of premiumness. No matter what you're doing, that brush metal frame all around the side and the Gorilla Glass 6 at the back and the Gorilla Glass 7 at the front makes the overall phone feels absolutely premium. Now, if you're someone like me who love heavy phone, who love phones, who has a little bit of a weight and bulkiness to it, you're gonna love this one. Now, one of the biggest selling points for the Galaxy Z Fold 2 is the versatility of a two screen. So basically there's an outer screen, which is a smaller screen, and then there is a bigger inner screen. Now the screen on the outside is a 6.23 inch Super AMOLED display with a hole punch. Now the outer screen has the aspect ratio of 25 by 9, which is a little bit narrower than the traditional smartphone display with the aspect ratio of 16 by 9 or 18 by 9. Now, even though the outer screen is a little bit narrower and it's only 60 hertz, but it's actually quite useful if you do a lot of scrolling up and down, checking emails, calling someone, receiving the call. Now, because of the narrow form factor, the keyboard is squeezed in. So the typing is a little bit uncomfortable in the beginning, but I think you'll get used to it. Now, other than scrolling up and down, checking emails and, you know, just sending a quick text. I don't find the outer screen that much useful. Like this is not a display that you wanna watch a YouTube video continuously for hours and hours. Or if you wanna do some gaming, this is not a display to do that. Now, just because the outer screen is small and narrower and it's 60 hertz, it doesn't mean that this display is not good. Oh no, it is. It's actually very sharp, crisp, vibrant overall is still an awesome display now since the outer display is small narrower and is only 60 hertz you're going to find a massive difference when you unfold the phone because when you do that you will find a 7.6 inch 2x dynamic amoled ultra thin glass display with a hole punch now one of the best thing about the inner display is not just that it can fold and unfold, but unlike the outer display, it has 120 Hertz adaptive high refresh rate. So everything you do on the inner screen, it feels super smooth. The display is colorful, super bright, our viewing angles are great. Overall, the display on the inner screen is in a league of its own. So on the outer screen, there's actually a decent screen protector, which is like a normal screen protector you're gonna find on any Samsung phone. But on the inner screen, they put on this another screen protector. This screen protector is hands down one of the worst screen protector that I've ever used. It's so bad. It feels rubbery, it feels cheap, it attracts fingerprint more than the phone itself. Most of the time, I'm actually cleaning the screen protector and the phone itself for a display that good. I wish Samsung would have done something better, but nevertheless, something's better than nothing. It's actually good to have a screen protector than not having it at all. So I'll keep that. Now, obviously the gaming experience for me on the Galaxy Z Fold 2 has been absolutely phenomenal. Now, trust me when I say this, Samsung never advertised the Galaxy Z Fold 2 as a gaming phone or for pro gamers. But once you do a gaming or once you watch a YouTube video on full screen on the inner display, it will spoil you. The gaming on the Galaxy Z Fold 2 is insane. Now, the gaming experience is not just because of the inner display being bigger and brighter, but it's also because of the top quality performance and amazing audio. Now, the performance on the Galaxy Z Fold 2 is hands down at the very top of the game. And so far, I haven't seen any lag, any hiccups or any sign of performance slowing down. And that's thanks to the Snapdragon 865 Plus, 12 gigs of RAM, 256 gigs of UFS 3.1 storage, you know, all the high end stuff. And not just that, the bigger display and the high quality performance, but the audio. Now the Galaxy Z Fold 2 has a legit stereo speaker setup at both top and bottom. The audio 
and the Galaxy Z Fold 2 is so loud, is so crisp and so clear that it can actually go head to head with some of the laptop speaker. It's so good. Two, compared to the original Galaxy Fold is much bigger and larger 6.2 inch Super AMOLED display. So the display this big, this bright, with the performance of that level and with audio that crazy loud and with 120 hertz enable all the time if you keep gaming and watching youtube videos for the hours and hours obviously the phone won't last all day and that brings me to the battery now the battery in the galaxy z fold 2 is a 4500 milliampere battery so it is separated into two half now the battery situation for the Galaxy Z Fold 2 and my experience has been pretty positive. I haven't had a day where the phone had died before I went to bed. So most of the time when I'm going to bed, the phone is on sometimes 25%, sometimes 30%, sometimes even 35% depending on how I'm using the phone. Now this is where the battery situation will completely rely on how you are using the phone. Like if you're someone like me who use the outer screen, actually, more than what you expect you would do before you get the phone in your hand then obviously the phone will last longer because the outer screen is smaller it's 60 hertz so definitely it helps preserve the battery but if you're someone who play a lot of games you know who are going to use the inner screen the full brightness definitely the battery will take a hit and uh, you might need to charge the phone before you hit the bed but thankfully the phone do comes with a 25 watt power brick inside the box and uh, it's actually good now the 25 watt power brick that actually charges the phone from complete dead to 25% in 18 minutes up to 50% in 37 minutes 75% in an hour and from complete dead to for 100% it would take one hour and 31 minutes this phone also support 45 watt watt charging it also support 11 watt wireless charging and four and a half watt reverse wireless charging now, in the Galaxy Z Fold 2, there's a side-mounted fingerprint scanner. This fingerprint scanner is so fast. Like, this is ridiculously fast. Now, this fingerprint scanner is so crazy sensitive that I had to turn off the setting, which required the fingerprint scanner to not work if the display is off. Now, one of the things that I was worried in the beginning before I started using the phone was because the two display has different refresh rate. So I was kind of worried that because going from the outer screen to the inner screen, it will be a smooth experience because I'm going from 60 hertz to 120 hertz. But in a situation where I'm going from the inner screen to the outer screen, I was kind of worried that that would affect my user experience, but it's not. Okay, so let's talk about the cameras. now. I was kind of disappointed when I found out that Samsung didn't include that 108 megapixel sensor from the S20 Ultra and the Note 20 Ultra. So the massive camera bump at the back, it contained a triple camera setup. So it has a normal wide angle lens, a telephoto lens and the ultra wide angle lens. So all the sensor at the back of the camera is actually a 12 megapixel sensor. But this camera situation in the Galaxy Z Fold 2 is a prime example of don't judge a book by its cover. Now, I'm not a photographer. I don't have any photoshopping skills or photo editing skills. I just open the camera and take the shot. And for me, the photos from the Galaxy Z Fold 2 is absolutely insane. I will be happy using this camera for many, many years to come. Now, obviously, it only has a 2x optical zoom. So if you go beyond that, you're definitely going to lose some details. Now the camera sample from the ultra wide angle lens is also very very good but overall the picture from the Galaxy Z Fold 2 they are sharp, they are crisp, there's an awesome dynamic range, it's saturated, overall it's an amazing camera. The night mode on the Galaxy Z Fold 2 is also equally impressive. Now this is the picture that I took during the day. The same picture that I took during the night with normal mode and this is the same picture that I took during the night with the night mode. Now for the video, the Galaxy Z Fold 2 can shoot up to 4K at 60 frames per second. Now the selfie camera on the inner screen and the outer screen, they are both 10 megapixel sensor. They are okay, the selfie camera is not bad, but it's nowhere near quality of the main camera at the back. So if you're someone who shoot a lot of TikTok videos or post a lot of photos on Instagram or Facebook, this 
will get the job done but if you are someone who wants a high quality selfie or want to make a high quality selfie video there is still an option for that so if you open the camera app on the auto screen at the top right corner you can see there's a selfie button so once you click it the phone will tell you to unfold the phone so once you unfold it you can now use the main camera for your selfie and the outer screen as a viewfinder so now you can shoot high quality selfies and high quality selfie videos so obviously this is a phone so core quality is loud and clear is sharp now since there is no earpiece on the inner screen so if you for some reason want to make a call in this form you're gonna have to use a speaker so thankfully you don't have to do this but overall the core quality is loud, it's clear, it's still a great phone. Now one of the unique features that Samsung heavily marketed and advertised is actually from the Galaxy Z Flip which is the flex mode and that's because of this new hinge. So the hinge on the Galaxy Z Fold 2 is actually different than the one in the original Galaxy Fold. Now this one right here has a dual cam mechanism. So basically what it does is it actually is able to hold the phone at multiple angle. Now there are certain apps which support the flex mode so if you use the flex mode while using those apps then it might be useful to you but other than that that's where the flex mode end for me. Now I have to say this when I first unboxed the phone, folded it, unfolded it and I started using it as my daily driver the hinge was a little bit stiffer it was a little bit tighter but now after two and a half weeks the hinge definitely has loosened up a little bit but it's nowhere near as flimsy or loose as the original Galaxy 4 was. So right now my hinge on my Galaxy Z Fold 2 has reached that certain point where it's not too tight but it's not too flimsy either. It's just perfect. Now for all the extra feature the hinge brings with the Z Fold 2 it also create a crease. Now the crease was in the original Galaxy Fold, it was in the Galaxy Z Flip and it's still here in the Galaxy Z Fold 2. Now I can see the crease majority of the time especially if there is a darker background, if there is a black background. If I run my finger across the screen from left to right you know I can feel the crease because of the groove in the middle of the line but I would also say this the crease has not affected my user experience at all. So if you're someone who is withholding buying the Galaxy Z Fold 2 because of the crease, take my word for it. The crease will not affect user experience. You can definitely see it just like a notch. But once you get immersed in whatever you're doing, whether you're gaming, you're watching videos, you will forget about the crease. But the one thing that's bothering me is the app continuity. So the majority of the app that I use, they support the app continuity going from the outer screen to the inner screen. The one feature that Samsung added with the app continuity in the Galaxy Z Fold 2 is the ability to continue the app from the outer screen to the inner screen and back from the inner screen to the outer screen. Now you have to go into the setting to actually enable the app but for some reason randomly three or four app will be unchecked so hopefully Samsung will fix it with the software update but other than that that's the only thing that has been annoyed me so far in my usage now before I get to the reason the phone is sturdy it's durable I haven't been babysitting this phone ever since I got it so the only thing that I've been doing is I'm not taking it near the kitchen sink or in the bathroom because it doesn't have the IP certification but I've been using this phone with the proper case from VRS which I made a video about so definitely check that out. The only thing that I keep in mind all the time is to make sure that whenever I'm closing the phone I always check there's nothing inside. So the one reason that I cannot recommend this phone to everybody is the price. The Galaxy Z Fold 2 here in Australia it retails for $2,000 $999. That is so expensive. Like it's not just saying that you can buy a tablet, you can buy a phone, you can buy a headphone for the price of one device. But it's more like you can actually buy a proper flagship high-end gaming laptop for this kind of money. Now because of the price I have seen a lot of YouTubers simply bashing the phone and you know laughingly discrediting 
buying the phone you know and just simply saying that for three thousand dollars or for two thousand US dollars you should never buy the Galaxy Z Fold 2 and obviously I don't agree with that and I also said that I actually find that a little bit more disrespectful to all the people who have actually purchased the Galaxy Z Fold 2 now, now don't get me wrong it's definitely not for everyone especially not for you if you already have a flagship from 2020 or even flagship from 2019 and if you're looking to buy this phone just because you want an improvement in performance then this is not the phone to buy there are plenty of options there are plenty of other smartphones with exactly the same spec same internal which will cost you less than half of what this car is costing. So it's very hard to justify whether the Galaxy Z Fold 2 is worthy of $3,000 price tag. Now I'm not gonna say it's not worth to buy it. I'm also not gonna say it's absolutely worth it to buy because it depends on you. What do you want? Like for me, I wanted something that's different, something that's unique, something that just stands out in the crowd. Now it becomes my duty and responsibility as a reviewer to let you know some of the few things that this guy is missing because for this price, you expect the high-end, the ultimate, ultra-premium flagship from Samsung but still it's missing some of the few things such as it doesn't have a headphone jack, it doesn't have an IP certification, it doesn't have the protection of the Gorilla Glass on the inside, it doesn't have the micro SD card slot expansion, it's crazy heavy, it's bulky, you know, you get the gist. And some of the features that I mentioned are something that you can find on a smartphone that costs less than one third of what this car is costing. Again, it's easy to bash this phone, at the same time it's easy to recommend this phone. Now for me, it's no longer a question whether there's a market for foldable or not. There definitely is. But the more interesting question is, is the foldable a stopgap? for something even more exciting or is the foldable here to stay for long term and if you're someone who's coming from an iphone and you want to make a switch from an iphone to an android or you're coming from oneplus oppo vivo lg google and you want the best the samsung and android has to offer and you want something different something that's unique something that just stands out in the crowd and you're willing to pay that crazy price tag then i think the foldable are the best bet and among them the galaxy z fold 2 is the one you should get that's been it thank you for watching hope you enjoyed the video and i'll catch you guys soon